right? This demo is for uh, creating new brackets. First thing you need to go do is click on new. I'm going to do a metric file that should be a standard millimeter IPT. We're going to start a sketch on the XY plane and you are going to sketch a rough rectangle. Dimensions for that rectangle. The height should be 50 millimeters. The width should be 156 millimeters. You should then go to an isometric angle, extrude, and that distance should be 87 millimeters. This is a good time to save since it's going to be your first one. You're going to go to a save as. I would name this bracket. I'm sorry, I would name this after your last name. Bracket. And then your class period. Next, I'm going to sketch on what is showing as the bottom of my part. And I'm going to cut off the corners. It says to do a coincident constraint from the upper corner, so I'm going to make sure that the rectangle I draw is from the upper corner. I personally like to do both of them at the same time because they are symmetrical. The height of this is 65 millimeters, and the width is 32 millimeters. The other side will be exactly the same. And you're going to do an extrude. Be sure you click in both spots. And you're going to do a cut through all. That's the first step. You're going to create another sketch right in that center face. This rectangle has to be drawn from the very, very top. Dimensioning on this is a little bit goofy. This part's fairly normal. It's 50 millimeters wide. Uh-oh. Mine didn't stick to the top. If this ever happens to you and it moves down, you can put a dimension from here to the top. And you can make that zero. It'll pull it back up. Distance from the edge of the square to the edge of the bracket is 21. And this is where it's a little bit unique. The dimension for the height of this actually is controlled by clicking on the bottom of the bracket, bottom of the square. Try that again. Bottom of the square, bottom of the bracket, still no. This sometimes happens, I'm just going to try a different sequence. From the bottom of the bracket to the bottom of the square, there we go. And this distance is supposed to be 29. So that'll end up getting you the correct size that you need. You do another cut, and uh, this will be cut to a depth of 27 millimeters. Make sure you change this to a cut. Oopsie. A little off today. Try that again. I'm going to tell it to do a cut. 27 millimeters, hit the green check mark. Next, you're going to do holes. So I'm going to put a sketch on this top surface here. I like to use the point tool to do a hole. There are dimensions on your handout that show that this should be from the edge to the point, 16 millimeters. And from this top edge to the point should be 23 millimeters. I'm going to press H on my keyboard for hold. This is going to be a counter bore. Counter bore is going to be 18 millimeters wide. Depth of the counter bore will be 10 millimeters deep. And the width is 13. The termination should be through all. You get one counter bore. You can see that basically it's just a large circle with a small circle drilled through it. 
We'll do the exact same counter bore on this side. So again, I use the point tool. Be sure you do not ever put something right on top of uh, something like this. It'll constrain it to that spot. H again for hold. These numbers are the same, so I'm just going to hit OK. Now I've got a counter bore on both sides. Next holes are on this surface back in here, and these are going to be counter sinks. Very similar process. You're going to look at your handout for the dimensions. From the edge to this point, they are supposed to be 23 millimeters away. This one will be exactly the same. This point is 15 millimeters below the top, and this one is 42 millimeters down. I'm going to press H for hole. This one will be a counter sink. It's going to be 20 millimeters wide. It's going to have a 90 degree angle cut, and the width is 13 millimeters. This will also be a through all. Now I have counter sinks. Put large fillets on the four corners. They will actually be 12 millimeter fillets. And I also put them on the inside of this notch. And hit my green check mark. If you look at it from the top view, you'll notice that these corners are all rounded on all four sides. And then inside of this notch, rather than having a 90 degree angle, there are now fillets there. Every single other sharp corner, with the exception of the bottom of this part, should get a 3 millimeter fillet. So anywhere there is a 90 degree angle edge, you should click on that to get these on. All right, final thing you need to do is color. Remember that coloring, you would go to right click on properties and you can make it any color that you want. I'm gonna go with yellow. So go through the process and change the color of your part. For turning in, I'm gonna to wanna to have it at basically an angle. Before you get ready to turn it in, I recommend going back and hitting the save button. You should rotate your bracket so that I can see both counter bores, so that I can see all major fillets, that I can see the counter sinks. Then you go to the eye, you hover over save as, you go over to save copy as, I like saving things I'm going to turn into my desktop. Your file name should be your last name, bracket hour six. Your save as type should be switched to a JPEG. Hit save. Minimize your software. You should look on your desktop and be able to find a JPEG file of just your bracket. This is a document you should turn into Google Classroom or whatever we happen to be using when you watch this. And Please be sure that you give me the correct file, the JPEG file. Do not give me one that looks like this, that has the letter I next to it. Thanks.